stuck to a mobile phone holder on the vent of my car. I'm just on my way back from uh, visiting a, a very good friend, a very dear friend, um, who, um, who unfortunately doesn't have a great deal longer, most likely, uh, left with us in this world. Um, late stage for lung cancer. But he's facing um, his life and his death with the most stoic, um, dignified um, brave attitude that I only hope that when my own, my own time comes, I can emulate to some degree or another. Uh, I'm just smoking on that note uh, of uh, lung cancer. <laughs> some uh, Ennerdale, no, not Ennerdale, sorry. It's uh, Erinmore Flake. But we were discussing the pair of us um, um, whole range of things that one encounters in life, not least mental health issues, anxiety in particular, panic attacks. Um, having been suffering from them myself now for a couple of years, at least since 2018, um, uh, yeah, we were discussing how, really in a way, um, when you think about it, anxiety is, uh, is is actually a very healthy way of responding to um, the stresses and strains of the lives that we live, the, the day-to-day traumas that we experience one way or another. Um, and I think it was Jiddu Krishnamurti who said um, that it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And it was while I was, um, I was on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, actually I was posting, a, of all things, it was a video on, uh, it was an Irish Republican song, um, because as anybody who knows my politics knows, um, I'm an absolute traitor to my country, I, in, in so much as I'm a, I support Irish independence, always have. Um, <coughs> But I posted this video uh, and it wasn't until I did so that I thought about my own childhood, my own upbringing um, in the army, in the British army, in Germany during the 1970s and 80s. Now this was at the height of the Irish Troubles as they were rather, um, yeah, <laughs> rather tritely described the Irish Troubles. It doesn't nearly put into context to the length and breadth of them. Uh, and also that period just prior to the end of the Cold War when when things were uh, were pretty intense and at the time I was living in Germany so we were very close to East Berlin you know the wall hadn't come down at that point um, there was still communism this threat of communism from the east and from the west from Ireland we were facing uh, a campaign by the IRA um, the Irish Republican Army who were undertaking operations against British soldiers like my father um, in places where I grew up so uh, when I was uh, just a small child and we had to drive into uh, the barracks which was where my school was um, you know our car would be swept for uh, for bombs uh, sniffer dogs mirrors underneath it, that sort of thing and I didn't realize it at the time because I guess I was too busy kind of just being a kid but um, I didn't realize that at the time we were all living on edge all the time between these two threats of Irish Republicanism and communism um, without even being aware of it we were all living on edge 
<coughs> so it's really no surprise um, that uh, throughout my life I've, I've suffered from anxiety <laughs> because it's a you know we're from from such an early age this sort of feeling of always being on edge was um, was kind of driven into me it was my part of my day-to-day -day life and I'm pretty sure that that's probably the case the world over um, I think collectively as a society we're probably really suffering from a high level of anxiety and one of the things that uh, my friends brought up and he married an American woman um, and a, a woman from Alabama um, so his children also my friends good friends of mine um, have all sort of brought up been brought up with uh, dual nationality so uh, and of course his wife she's from the south from the deep south some very right-wing uh, right-wing family members Ian and myself are both fierce lefties of course <laughs> but one of the things that Ian mentioned was the fact that over there in the US he just finds it tragic that the children are going to school and they're being taught to uh, you know how to respond to school shooters you know so in much the same way as the boomer generation were taught to duck and cover from the communist threat uh, you know today's children are being taught to duck and cover hide in the broom closet um, from a potential school shooter and so there's this new generation of children being brought up just the same way as I I was with this high level of anxiety constantly they're being taught to be anxious they're being taught to be afraid from the earliest of ages and I just find that an absolute tragedy really because in reality and you know I mean I've, I've lived 46 years now um, in reality the threats that I have been taught to face were never anything like uh, the ones that I've experienced in my life it was you know I'm just stopping at my local farm shop get some milk um, and a bit of chicken for dinner so I'm gonna pick this video up on my way back home in just a moment okay okay I'm back right where was I uh, raising children with anxiety yeah So basically, as human beings, we kind of, we, we fall into the same repetitive cycles, you know. Um, everyone's sort of like, protect the children, protect the children. But nobody actually thinks really, like, perhaps you're maybe doing more harm to them by causing them to be afraid of everything around them, to be afraid of their neighbors, to be afraid of people from a different country, to be afraid of people of a different skin colour or a different sexuality or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Now, absolutely no doubt whatsoever that a few of my followers are going to strongly disagree with what I have to say, because I know that there's a few amongst you who are quite right wing. Um, and, uh, you know, you're all about protecting the children. But, you know, from a very human point of view, from somebody who suffered from it myself, and witnessing what we are in the world today, falling into that same cycle, for goodness sake, for goodness sake, stop teaching your children to be afraid of everything. Because in the long run, it will fuck them up a lot more than the communists or the IRA ever did fuck me up. <laughs> so, I guess that's my message for this video, really. You all, uh, Christians amongst you always talk about loving thy neighbour, well, yeah, maybe maybe try practising it. And stop passing on that bullshit to your children. Yeah. 
anyway. That's enough for the minute. Hope you're all doing well. And I'll catch you again soon.